Hey guys, welcome to episode number 466. Today is Tuesday, so I have another tank tip for you. And today, I wanted to share with you how Pleco Caves are constructed. Now, one thing that I love to do is look very closely at the world because it can tell you a lot about how things are constructed. And uh, so, this is a Pleco Cave. It's uh, one that was actually damaged in a shipment that we got from my aquarium box. Um, you know, I think we got like 500 caves in, and this was the only one that was damaged. So um, I kept it, and uh, this is what I'm using for the, uh, the video here. Um, but as you'll notice, it is a rectangular tube. It's hollow in the middle, and the end is very clearly pinched off, right? So you know that this started life as a rectangle and then it turned into this cave shape. But if we very slowly turn this around, what you'll notice is that one, the, uh, the end here is sort of chopped off at a, a weird angle, right? You can see it's sort of at an angle there. And if we sort of look down it, you can see that it's sort of uh, got a, a curve to it. It's sort of like it's spiraled a little bit um, while it was being constructed. And there's very good reasons for that. The, the only other thing you'll notice is if you look at this real close, you'll see that there are striations that run the length of the Pleco tube, right? Very, very clear striations that run the length of the Pleco tube. And all of these things are telltale signs of how exactly it was constructed. And here's how. It's basically just a clay extruder. If you've played with Play-Doh as a kid, you've used an extruder before. Essentially, what it is, is a very simple machine where you have a chamber full of your material. In this instance, it's clay. And there's a press. So you're able to press and uh, compress that clay through what's called a die. And that's what's gonna give you your shape. Now, if you're doing a very simple shape, um, then you can get by with a one part die. But because we have a hollow inside, we actually need a two part die. And it consists of one thing that's called a mandrel and another thing called a cap. Essentially, what the mandrel does is it allows your clay to sort of pass through several holes on its way through the cap, and the mandrel and the cap fit together in a way where it creates uh, an extruded tube or an extruded shape, which is hollow on the inside, just like this, has very uniform uh, wall thicknesses, and we'll just continue to extrude for any length, any amount of length that you can imagine until you run out of clay on the back side of your press. So, there are manual presses where you actually have like a plunger and you have to forcefully press the clay through. Uh, that's basically what you used as a kid with Play-Doh. There's also mechanical extruders which will automatically press and essentially what you have is once you turn it on, you're just gonna get a tube of clay that shoots out the end and you can chop it to whatever length you want and it's just gonna continue to extrude your clay until you run out. And that's most likely how this was actually constructed. Um, because it was sort of chopped off at a, a strange angle, um, you can imagine that if you turn an extruder like that on and you've got clay running down the length of your table you're going to want to chop it as quickly as possible set them off to the side while more of them continue to get extruded so that's essentially how these pleco caves are made obviously they come in a lot of different shapes and sizes uh, this one is a rectangle um, cave but they come in round shapes, they come in half moon, like D shapes, come in all kinds of different shapes. And essentially what that comes down to is just a different shape extruder die. 
the die is what's going to give you your shape. So you just swap those out and all of a sudden you've got a different shape that's being extruded. So that in a nutshell is how a pleco cave can be very quickly constructed. Obviously the clay needs to dry and then it needs to be fired in a kiln. So there is quite a lot to it, but it's one of those things that can be done fairly economically and on a fairly large scale because this is a process that is used all over the world for a whole bunch of different materials um, from aluminum to steel to whatever else you can imagine it there's probably an extruder that extrudes it so clay is a pretty easy thing to extrude and this is one thing that you can make with an extruder anyways guys hope you found that interesting I like to look at the world closely and uh, notice these sort of things so I hope you enjoyed and I'll see you guys later.